Doctor Strange film! Doctor Strange film! Ah yes, greetings, Gate. Holy ectoplasm! It's movie fanfare calling this Doctor Strange film. Hey, what's up, Doc? You're not a ghost! Oh no? When's the last time you saw a comment on one of my posts? <laughs> no! I mean, what are you doing popping up here? Well, Goulasher, I mean, Goulier, I was just floating around the neighborhood, canvassing for a ghost party senatorial candidate. A ghost party candidate? Who? Who? Who else? Arlen Specter. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Even the dead could see that one coming. Anyhow, I noticed your little fright show was going on. So I decided to drop by and offer a few choices for some of the strangest horror movies ever made. I'm going to offer you three prime examples from the three main categories. Animal, vegetable, and mineral. Oh, really? Oh, yes. So sit back and strap yourself in. Now, Goulier, as I'm sure you know, you have your bats, your cats, your rats, your wolves, your spiders and snakes, and other Jim Stafford movies. You have your bunny rabbits. What's that you say? Bunny rabbits? That's right. Hoppy, floppy-tailed little rabbits were the creatures rampaging through a desert town in MGM's 1972 film, Night of the Lepus. You out there are probably wondering, how do you take a cute little bunny rabbit and make it look scary? Well, MGM's solution was pure cinematic genius. Just shoot up from ground level and spread some fake blood on the whiskers and presto, giant man-eating Lego morphs. Problem was, even in slow motion and with the sound of hooves on the soundtrack, don't ask me why hooves, rabbits just ain't scary. The fact that they hardly ever interact with the humans that you see on the screen didn't help much either. The basic story was that husband-wife scientists Stuart Whitman and Janet Lee were trying to come up with a way to stop the rabbit population from ruining ranchers' territories. And wouldn't you know, their precocious daughter lets an infected test bunny out into the wild. And before long, all the area buns have grown into humongous proportion and are out there devouring the passers-by. This is definitely a strange film. The scariest movie I've seen with rabbits since Harvey. Other interesting aspects to it, of course, were that there is a mascotted DeForest Kelly in his last movie that wasn't a Star Trek film, and the immortal line uttered by a sheriff at the local drive-in, There is a herd of killer rabbits headed this way, and we desperately need your help. Now, I'd like to step over and move on to the vegetable category. When it comes to vegetable, wooden acting, I think, more than qualifies. And wooden acting is what you get in The Return of Dr. X, a 1939 Warner Brothers movie that was an in-name only sequel to the 1932 shocker Dr. X with Lionel Atwell and Faye Ray. To play the title villain, Warner Brothers had planned to get Boris Karloff. But when those plans fell through, they got the next logical choice. They went and got Humphrey Bogart. Yes, sweetheart, you heard it. Humphrey Bogart in his one and only horror movie. He's a skunk hair dude, pasty faced scientist named Dr. Xavier, who's brought back to life by a colleague thanks to synthetic blood and turns into a sort of zombie, sort of vampire character who goes around killing people to keep himself alive. This is not a great film by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's the kind of contract filler stuff that often put Bogart at the outs with the studio. But game trooper that he was, he gave it his best shot. And while he's no Karloff, in fact, he's not even Dwight Fry, it's interesting to see Bogart as a vampire. The movie also starred Dennis Morgan, Rosemary Lane, and future Bowery boy Hans Hall. I'll go back over this way now, and I'll cover Mineral. What's that you say? How do you make minerals interesting as a horror movie monster? That's easy. You send them down to Earth in a meteor. And that's what happened in Universal's 1957 release, The Monolith Monsters. When a meteorite crashes into a sleepy southwest desert town, the kind you only saw in Universal movies of the 1950s, alien rocks come out that start growing as they absorb silicone and silicates from the water in the area. When people touch these rocks, the water is drained from their body and they start turning into stone. The tidal monsters grow into huge crystal stalagmites, 
Or was that stalactite? I can never remember which one is which. But grow to humongous proportions and then just collapse, breaking and making even more monsters. It's kind of like a giant Jenga game. Grant Williams, who earlier that year was the Incredible Shrinking Man, once again finds himself up against a giant-sized menace as he stars as the heroic geologist, and really, is there any other kind, who must come up with a way to stop these creatures, rocks, whatever they are, from spreading out and taking over the whole world and draining everyone dry. Gee, a tidal menace that stands around, absorbs silicone, and eventually just topples over. What a pity they couldn't have done a remake with Anna Nicole Smith. <laughs> now I probably should mention something about fungus just to finish up this and... Great Caligari! Is that the time? I'm late for a vital medical get-together. Oh really? What is it? My weekly golf outing with my colleagues, Dr. Cyclops and Dr. Jekyll. I thought you said foursome. That's only three, including you. Now don't you worry you're noggin' about that, Nudnik. Dr. Jekyll carries a formula with him that takes care of that problem. Anyway, Ghoulie Irv, happy Halloween to you and all your listeners. And remember, a strange film a day keeps the boredom away. Dr. Strangefilm, thank you so much for spreading your brand of fiendness to our trip today. Don't worry, the pleasure was all yours. Ah, yes. And everybody, fiends and friends, goodbye later! <laughs>